Hi and welcome to TechNut. Since we posted our first video on hosting your own game servers, we received a lot of questions regarding port forwarding, which is something that we didn't make clear in the videos. Because every router is different, and the router that I'm using is a bit more complicated than what you usually find in a normal home. However, we got a hold of a D-Link router, and we're going to take you through the basics and show you how to do port forwarding. Before we go into the actual port forwarding, I should explain how this works when you're connecting to the internet. You have your client over here, let's say you're going to watch a YouTube video. You type in youtube.com in your web browser and the request is sent. Your firewall knows that this request is coming from a computer on the inside of the firewall. So it just passes the request along to the server hosted by Google and the response is sent over the internet and back through your firewall. The reason that it's not blocked this time is that the connection is already established. The firewall knows that you've requested this information, so it also knows that this, the information should be sent back to this specific computer. If we turn things around, you have the client out on the internet and your server right here. Let's say you're hosting Arc Survival Evolved. Your friend tries to join, the request is sent over the internet and will hit your firewall. The firewall is not aware that Arc, the Arc server is running, so it will block the connection and your friends will get some kind of timeout or unable to connect. So, if we set up port forwarding, things will work a lot better. The request is sent. The firewall has been told that Arc Survival Evolved is running, or more specifically, a server is running using this port, because it's all about the ports. So, the firewall knows to send the request to a specific computer, in this case, the server running Arc Survival Evolved, and the server will be able to respond and the connection will start working and it goes on and on like this. Of course, all of this is a lot more complicated than I explain here, but we're gonna try to keep it simple. It's time to set it up on the D-Link router. The first thing that you will need is the IP address of your router. If you don't know this already, we're gonna show you how to find it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up CMD. You can of course do this any way you want. And I'm gonna type in IP config. This will display the network information. You might get more than one of these if you have a net, wireless network adapters, multiple network cards, something like this, this. But if they are actually in use, they should have the same default gateway in most cases. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab this IP address. Now that we have the router IP address, we're going to fire up a browser. We're going to type in http colon slash slash and I'm going to paste the IP address of the router. By clicking enter, I arrive at the router login page. If you're not aware of the password for your router, it may be printed underneath it, or you can usually find it online just by typing in the name of your router and default password in Google. So as you can see, this is a D-Link router, specifically it's the DIR615, it's a fairly old model, but it will do to show the principles of port forwarding. Your router might not be identical, but if that's the case and you just run into some problems, check that router manual. There's usually something there. In some cases you have to create the application first and define the ports before you can actually forward them. But the D-Link is actually pretty straightforward. So I know for a fact that the default signing credentials for the D-Link router is username admin, if I can type that correctly, as well as blank password. And this is what the port forwarding page looks like. You just have to go into advanced and it's right there on the top. As you can see, we can create 25 different rules, which should be plenty. Uh, this one is pretty straightforward. The only thing that I'm not quite sure of is these checkboxes, which I suppose do enable the actual port forwarding. Don't worry about the internet offline here. It's just that this router is not actually connected to anything else than my computer at the time, because it's not necessary for the demonstration. So let's continue with the example of ARC. ARC uses two different ports and two different protocols. As you can see in the D-Link router, traffic type represents the protocol, which is usually defined as TCP or UDP. You will see this in the video descriptions of the videos. As you can see, this one also supports any, which is basically one of these two. So in this case, we only have to create two rules for ARC. If your router 
forces used to define TCP or UDP, there will actually be two rules for every port. But let's continue. I'm just going to type in ARC1 here, and the first port will be 27015, to send the rest automatically. And you need to specify your IP address so that the router knows where to send the requests arriving to this port. And we can see that in the IP config that we brought up earlier. This is the actual IP address of my computer. Of course, you would have to run IP config on the computer that has the server installed to get this. I think it's also in the server manager if you're running ARC. So, there we have the first rule set up. And for the second rule, you can pretty much guess. The only difference is the port, which is 7777. Fills in that automatically, and we get the IP address as well. I'm gonna leave those boxes checked because I suppose that they do enable. Uh, doesn't say anything about it, I think. So, we're just gonna go ahead and save the settings. And this means that the ports are now open in the firewall. If you're still having problems, make sure to check the Windows firewall. We cover that in all our videos using PowerShell, so you should be able to follow along just fine. Port forwarding, in a nutshell, there you have it. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you hate it, give it a thumbs down. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below or check out the link in the video description. We're actually starting a TechNut forum to be able to give you better help when you run into issues. So check that out, sign up, and if you have problems, don't hesitate, just create a thread and we'll try to get you up and running. And as always, thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe.